Okay. Just give us a moment to load. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. Let's see. So let me share my screen. Any others? Nobody else is in the waiting room. I'll check it again in just under 10 minutes. Start the broadcast. Oh, is that, um, what is it, War Machine? All right. So let me see, as far as announcements, okay. I can't, it's no, it's no real announcement. So hopefully everybody is, is making their way or finding their way. They're finding the resources that they need. Uh, for this course, this is a college algebra one um, with online lab. So the main, the main things that you really want to make sure that you you're you're working on, basically our assignments. So we've had one assignment that was due this past Sunday night at midnight at eleven fifty nine, and so our second assignment is section one point two, which is what we're gonna we're gonna touch on it today. So basically, the Pearson. Hopefully, everyone has gotten started on their Pearson assignments, and then also hopefully everyone has made their way has co contacted Dr. Lamar and been working on your your lab so she she kind of she runs the lab portion right uh, as usual uh, i do live stream these sessions to my youtube channel so you can go back and watch i want to say all of our sessions from the beginning and this one's also live stream on my youtube so you can always reference it this the structure is online asynchronous so you're, you're not obligated to stay once you since you're in my zoom right now so everybody in attendance right now you've gotten your attendance credit and so again Usually what I like to do, I like to use class time as a QA. and a um, I'll just kind of go through the lecture, but if you guys want to go through the homework, just get my attention, say, hey, can we can we go through this problem or this or that? And we can talk about anything that's on Pearson from any homework quiz, or even exams, right? So if you have an exam, even if the exam is live, I don't really care. Like, as long as we're talking about college algebra, we can talk about it, we can work on it together. So if we are in the same space at the same time, you know, we can work it out. Okay. So with that, um, again, if if you want to work on the homework or if you have specific questions, you just got to get my attention. Otherwise, I'm going to take some time to start making my way through section 1.2 lines. Also, it doesn't hurt to like watch the sessions with my other students. I'll do different things with each set, right? So I'll do what I can with you guys and in a different class or ask different questions. I know that's a lot. You know, I don't really expect you to do it, but it doesn't hurt to just like peek in on the other sessions um, because sometimes we do different things. So here we have section 1.2 lines and a few objectives. We want to find the slope of a line. We want to write the point slope form of the equation of a line, write the slope intercept form of the equation of a line, recognize the equations of a horizontal and vertical lines, recognize the general form of the equation of a line and find equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So right off the bat, you know, this section is chock full of formulas, right? So again, I do encourage you to be as neat and organized as possible. What that means is that you want to do your best to have a copy of the notes. Um, I haven't really been loading my. I can I can load the the instructor notes. So what I'm what I'm showing, I can load it and make it available for you all. Uh, because my notes have a, a bit more detail, and I still need to load the student notes. I do intend to load the student notes for the semester. And basically, what it is, it'll be definitions and like theorems and correlators and stuff like that. And then the example with just the question, but no supporting details. And I'll release the supporting details um, on each on each given day. All right, with, like if you and and so it's a good idea to try to attempt those examples in advance. Um, and I, I'll probably get that done by the end of the day. Hopefully, you want to try to work on the examples in advance. You know, just to get a sense of where you are. Okay, so let's let's hop into it. Let me see the time. I'll give them another five minutes to get into the waiting room. So we have, go ahead. Is there a question? So we have uh, some definitions. It says, since the graph of a of first degree equations in two variables are straight lines, these equations are called linear equations. We, we measure the steepness of a line by a number called its slope, all right? So we have some definitions. Let me grab this. So it says the rise is the change in the y coordinate between the points and the run is a corresponding change in the x coordinates, right? So slope, you may have heard it as rise over run or the change in y. So the change in y value over the change in x. So the, the rise over the run, all right? Um, so how, you know, that's, that's typically how we find slope. Slope is the, the change in y divided by the change in x. 
The higher the slope, the more steep the line is. A slope of zero is a flat horizontal line like the x-axis. The, as, as the slope approaches infinity, it gets closer to the y-axis, right? So the, the y-axis has an undefined slope. So the slope of a non-vertical line that passes through two points is denoted by M and is defined as this, right? So if you have your formula sheet, this is uh, one of those formulas you definitely want to add to your formula sheet. This is the slope formula. So the slope is uh, the change in Y over the change in X, which is the rise over the run. Change in Y would denote like this, divided by the change in X, which is denoted by this. Uh, the slope of a vertical line is undefined, okay? So again, if anything is not clear, just feel free to unmute yourself. You can also type your questions in the chat and I do check the chat periodically. So in this example, uh, we're asked to sketch the graph of the line that passes through these points and find and interpret the slope of the line, right? So for sketching the graph, we will plot these points. Um, I'm just gonna do a rough sketch. I'm not gonna do a accurate sketch. I'm just gonna do a quick rough sketch just cause I feel like this is fairly straightforward. So say my positive Y is in this direction. This is my positive Y. Say this is my positive X. Oops, let me redo that. So positive X is in this direction. Uh, let me see, over, okay. So the first point says what? Uh, one comma negative one. So if we start at the origin, and again, this is just a rough sketch. If I go, this point P says to go right one and down, down one, so we'll be here. This is the point P one comma negative one, all right? And then Q, now I didn't draw my tick marks or anything like that. Again, I'm just doing a rough sketch. Is that crooked? Why does it look crooked to me? Supposed to lock. Let me try one more time. Usually it like locks, so I know I'm horizontal. There it is. I guess I just needed to do a fresh line. And I was trying to avoid using graph paper. I probably should have used graph paper. And let me just move this over just a little bit too. So it's about there, right? I'm just I'm just eyeballing it. So again, the idea, again, I didn't use my tick marks, but you know, it's like we went right one and down one. And then the point Q, we go right three. So one, two, three is about there and three. So it's about here. So then this is the point Q, which is three comma three, right? I didn't show the graph here. So then to graph it, we just connect these with a solid line. And usually we do, put, you know, put arrowheads on it. Right, so the arrow uh, signifies that it goes forever in that direction. Cool. Okay, that's good enough, right? Um, so then the slope, right? So let's let's use the slope formula. Now we could just count it, right? The slope is the rise over the run, which is your change in y over change in x. Um, Let's do the slope formula first. So again, uh, my recommendation is every time you use a formula to write it down. So the slope between two points is your change in y over change in x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So every time you use a formula, you wanna write it down. Let me uh, create some space for myself. I just wanna move this down like about there. And then also what I'm a fan of doing is when I get ordered pairs, I like to just go ahead and label them. So like I like to go X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. And so what, what that does is it makes it much easier to just, you know, put it into our formulas. So then if we continue, our Y2 is three, our Y1 is negative one. Notice my use of parentheses. Our X2 is three and our x1 is one, right? So then double negative becomes positive. So that becomes a four on top. 
and the two on the bottom. So then the slope is two, all right? Um, this would be a little bit easier on graph paper, but let's go ahead and count, all right? So in a graphical sense, right? Say we were to count this. This would be what? One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. So there's four steps there. And then, and then it went one, two, right? So if we had our grid lines, you could see that a lot easier. Um, but so then if we say the rise over the run, you see the four divided by two, you see it right there, right? Uh, so the way we did it in green over to the right is the way we're gonna be doing it more often than not. Okay, let me, let me take a moment to check attendance. I mean, just check uh, the chat and see if we got any stragglers. We do have a few stragglers. Let's try to go ahead and get them. Uh, he was here. Let me just make sure I got his credit. Uh, let me do this. Mm. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Let me get this student. Okay, judging. Okay, got him. Yeah. There we are. Okay. All right. Welcome, gentlemen. Let's go back to sharing our screen. Oh, share the screen. Excuse me, um, Professor C. Go ahead. Did, did my attendance get credit when I enter at nine o'clock? Because I, I got kicked off the Zoom meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, Late, I haven't really been doing late um, credit. So as long as you get into my Zoom or you just make your presence known on some level, I've been giving people full credit. Um, so, and the other thing about the attendance, you might see it in Blackboard. It is not factored into your um, grade. It's, it's, just, it's just a record. I had to keep record and like, you know, when was the last time I saw so-and-so or I haven't seen them or they were here on that day. But it, it, it has no direct, only way it really affects your grade is if you get booted out of the course. And the only way you get booted out of the course is if you accumulate three unexcused absences. But as long as you've been making your presence known, um, you know, everybody's been getting attendance credit. You know, but I think I do need to go and like follow up on a few students though. I know there's a few that I haven't seen. Okay. Let's get the party going. So we got the slope. We got a slope again of two. lose our work okay i guess i gotta back up and it's this one and we left off here okay that's not too bad let me shrink this down so it doesn't look so so weird so like so, look at this a little bit better Okay. All right. So again, so to graph, all we did was plot the two points and connected them with a straight straight edge. And then the slope was basically the rise over the run, which is the change in y over the change in x. And so we got a slope of two. Oh, uh, and another thing about slope. So this has a slope of positive two. Notice that when we trace it left to right, it goes up, right? So when you trace a, a graph left to right and it's going up, that's gonna have a positive slope. If we were tracing this left to right and it goes down, it would have a negative slope, okay? But when, we, when we're talking about increasing or decreasing or positive or negative slope, you gotta trace it from the left to the right, okay? So I think we got that same graph. The rise was four, the run was two, okay? So then the slope was two. So again, slope was rise, rise over run, which is changing y over changing x. Long story short, get the same result that we got. Okay. A slope of two means that the value of the y increases two units for every one unit increase in the value of x. Okay. And so some main facts about slope. Can I get a volunteer to read this for me, please? I can read it. Scanning graphs from left to right, lines with positive slopes rise and lines with negative slopes fall. Hmm. All four? Yes, sir. 
The greater the absolute value of the slope, the steeper the line. The slope of a vertical line. Oh, oh. Jumpy, my bad. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Three, the slope of a vertical line is undefined, and four, the slope of a horizontal line is zero. All right, so, so I think that's what we literally just said. Like, as we trace it from left to right, the positive slope is going to go up. And when we trace it left to right, a negative slope is going to go down. Uh, the greater the absolute value of the slope, the steeper the line. So the, the higher the slope, the steeper the line. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. I know we said that. And the slope of a horizontal line is zero, right? So that's like the x-axis is a flat surface when the slope is zero. If a line has a slope m and passes through the point x1, y1, then the point slope form of an equation of the line is this, right? OK. There's one more we need to talk about. So this is, this is a formula that you definitely want to add to your formula list, right? And this is called the point slope form of equation of the line. We use this formula whenever we have a slope and a point, all right? So if we have our slope and we have some x1 and a y1, we will use this formula. There's one more I want to talk about, and then I'm going to show you some little shortcuts for some tips and tricks. So this one asks us to find the point slope form of the equation of the line passing through this point with a slope uh, three and then solve for y. Okay. So asks us to find the point slope form. So, so first off, if it says point slope, it's a good idea to use a point slope formula. So let's go ahead and use that right now. It's going to be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay. Um, so again, this is a formula that you want to add to your formula sheet. This is the point slope form of the equation of a line. And then they gave us a point. So this is our x1, y1. And you can see the slope of three is here. All right. So let's just plug those in. So we're going to say y minus y1, which is what? Negative 2, equals our slope, which is 3, times x minus x1, which is 1. Okay. So this is going to be the point slope form. Or actually, let's do one other thing. So double negative becomes positive. So we're going to have y plus 2 equals 3 times x minus 1, right? So this is our point slope form. And then it asks us to solve for y. So if we have y plus 2, we want to isolate the y or get the y by itself. So we want to move, move this 2 to the other side by doing the opposite. So what's the inverse operation of addition? So what operation undoes plus two, we would do what? Subtraction. Action. We're going to subtraction or we're going to subtract two from both sides, all right? Uh, so then I'm just going to continue on the side over here. So a lot of math is about balance, uh, isolating variables, and we're, we're, we're constantly using the inverse or the opposite operation to do that, all right? So if we're adding two, if we want to move that two to the other side of the equal sign, then we undo it with this inverse operation of subtraction. So then ultimately we're gonna get y equals, I'm also gonna go ahead and do another step. I'm gonna distribute this three into the parentheses, all right? So if we put all that together, we're gonna to have three x minus three, and I think we said minus two, all right? These guys cancel each other, okay? And then if we combine like terms, we ultimately get y equals three x minus five. I'll just highlight it because it, it did x for multiple parts, right? So we got the y plus two equals three times x minus one. And then when we solved for y, we got three uh, x minus five. Let's see what the notes say. So point slope, you see it here. The y plus two, uh, actually it's, it's a little bit here. Yeah, anyway, I mean, then when we solve, I think we got we got to the final thing. All right, so it's fine. Okay. That should bring us to the final part that we need. Let's do one more. Find the point slope form of the equation of the line passing through this point, then solve for y, right? Okay, this says find the point slope form, right? So when, when do we use the point slope formula? When do we use that? 
point slope formula. Four point and a slope. Right? So we use the point slope formula when we have a point and a slope. Do we have at least one point? Yes. Yes. Do, do we have the slope? We can find it. We can find the slope, right? We can find it. So we can use the point slope, but we need to first find the slope, right? So let's write down, let's start by writing down um, the formulas that we're gonna use. So if it asks us to find a point slope form, let's start with the point slope formula. I'm gonna go ahead and label it. So this is gonna be the point slope formula. Uh, that's gonna be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? But then we realized that we needed to find the slope, right? So then let's use the slope formula as well. And that's gonna be the rise over the run, which is changing y over changing x. So that's gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And as a hint, um, because it says to solve for y, we're actually gonna finish, this is gonna be called the slope intercept form. All right, I'm just gonna leave it intercept, that's good enough. So we're gonna finish in the form y equals mx plus b, right? So whenever we're working lines, these are the three forms that we're kind of be flowing between. Um, oftentimes we'll finish with the slope intercept. Um, can anybody notice a similarity between point slope and slope? Like how could we go from one to the other, from one to the other? Like suppose we started with the slope. What, how does it relate to the point slope? Anybody notice anything there, how these two are similar? So when I was kind of like introduced to these, I noticed that these two are essentially the same, right? Yeah, if you we can just multiply. Yeah, if we multiply you both sides multiply by the bottom one, one, right? You don't get the if, other one. Yeah, if you multiply both sides of this, this one by the denominator, it'll turn into this and you just lose the two. So so for for these two, you get two for one, right? If if you know this one, this one, as long as you know that manipulation, you can you can get it. You multiply by the denominator, lose the two, and then you get this one. So these two to me go together. Um, but more often than not, for me personally, I find myself using the slope intercept y equals mx plus b. Okay, so let's see this in action. So we need to find the slope first. So let's go ahead and start there. Uh, let's see. So our slope, now our y2, let me do my labels like I like to do. So then if we go x1, y1, x2, y2, right? So then my y2 is seven, my y1 is one, my x2 is three minus my x1. Notice my use of parentheses to keep track of that negative, all right? Because that, that'll, that'll trip people up very easy, all right, that part in there. Okay, so then if we keep going, let me see, let me drop down actually. Seven minus one is what? Six, three plus two is five. So we have a slope of six over five. Let me highlight it, all right? Okay, so we got our slope. So I know, I mean, we can go ahead and plug it into the point slope formula, that's fine, because now we have a slope. Anybody have a favorite point between the two? Like a fir the first point or the second point? A favorite point, anybody? Three, seven. The three, seven, okay. Let's try the three, seven. So, and you can try plugging in the, the first point and we should get the same result, right? So then we're gonna say, y minus, instead of, we're gonna use the second point. So y minus seven, the slope is six by five, x minus three, okay? Let me think. Now, I personally am a fan of clearing out my fractions, right? Does anybody know a technique where we can get rid of all of our fractions here? Anybody know that technique? Because fractions- The reciprocal? Multiply by the multiply by, by the common denominator. So, or yeah, common number. the least common denominator, right? So if we multiply both sides by the LCD, we'll get rid of the fractions and we'll make it way more simple, right? So this takes a little bit of practice uh, because on the left, 
we're going to say times five, but then on the right, I mean, sorry, on the left, we have to distribute the five, but on the right, it just cancels like this, all right? We're not distributing the five on, on the right. We're not going into the parentheses. So it takes a little bit of practice, but, you know, it is possible. Okay, that was good. But yeah, if you get that down, you'll make your life so much easier. So then what we end up getting, mm, that may have been a little bit extraneous in this case, but let's keep going anyway, because I think we're going to have to remove it out. But anyway, so we get 5y minus 35 equals, I'm going to go ahead and distribute over there, 6x minus, what is that, 18? Let me see. So let's go ahead and add the 35. We get 5y equals 6x. Let me see. What's that difference? If there were 20 to 15, 17. So plus 17. Okay. And then we're one step away. Divide both sides by five. So again, it takes practice. Now, I don't know that that was the better move here. Because um, otherwise, what we, we would have been doing is distributing that 6 over 5. And the fraction would have been five, but then you would have been doing six over five times three. And, you know, sometimes it makes it simple. Sometimes it doesn't. So then final step, we divide all terms by five. We get Y equals, because you see the six over five is back, uh, plus 17 over five. So sometimes it's unavoidable. Okay. Let me see, find a point slope form. So our point slope, let me highlight that as well. Our point slope was here. And then solve for y. And I'm going to put my final answer in a box. OK. So I know that was a little bit back and forth. The fractions is just what they, that's how they are. And you just have to, you have to suck it up and just try. Like, keep in mind, you have support. You can use calculators. Um, you have things at your disposal that you can use. Uh, OK. Let's compare this with the prepared notes. So they got the same slope of 6 over 5. And then, and they chose the 0 0.37 as well, right? And they get the six over five X plus 17 over five. If you had chosen the other point, it still would, you should, you should get the same result in the end. Okay. All right. Let me, um, let me check the, let me check Zoom really quickly. So the chat, you have a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, we can do a session. It's not, it's no worries. Let me see. So we have a solid, a solid 10 minutes, a little, little more than 10 minutes. I think that's War Machine. That's a really, I like that uh, the thumbnail. Okay, let's keep going. So here we're asked to find the point slope form of the equation the line with the slope m and y intercept, then solve for y. Uh, we are missing something here. Oh, okay, the line passes through 0b. Well, I guess we'll just use this. How do we? I guess it got deleted. So it says uh, the line that passes through zero B. Let's actually do, let's actually do this one. So we're given. Um, let me just scratch that. Hold on. Let's see. I don't want this guy. This is what this is what we were missing. And that can go like here. Let's crop. All right. So let's let's take a look at this one. So it says find the point slope form. Well, let me see. It passes through this point. Wait a minute. Find the point slope form of the equation line with the slope m and the y intercept b. It passed the line that passes through this. They're still missing something. Yeah, this one's totally missing something. So I'm gonna get rid of this because it, it doesn't tell us anything unless they wanted us to leave the slope generic. Oh, okay. So we were fine. Let's go back. Okay. All right. So it says it has a slope M and a y intercept B. So point slope. Let's go ahead and write out the point slope. Okay, so point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? 
Now they're telling us that the slope is M and the wire intercept is B. So if the wire, oh, okay, so we didn't need that. Okay, okay, I get it now. Okay, so let's get this. We can get rid of that. So what we have is fine. I didn't realize it was being generic. So our line is gonna have the slope M and the wire intercept B. So if the Y intercept is B, what that means, if the wire intercept is B, that means it crosses the Y X at the Y axis at the point zero comma B, right? So that's where that comes from. So that means one point that we have is zero B. That's from the Y intercept. And then our slope is just gonna be M. And so we're gonna leave it generic like this, right? So then let's plug these in. Again, this is gonna be our X1, Y1, and this is our slope, okay? So then if we plug in those corresponding components, we're gonna have <clears throat> Y minus B equals M times X minus zero, right? So this is the line that passed that has a wire intercept of uh, B. So then if we solve for Y, uh, x minus zero is going to be x. We add b to both sides. So we're going to say like plus b, plus b, and simplify. Again, this is going to cancel this. So then we're going to get y equals mx plus b, right? And that, that brings us to, this is called the slope-intercept form, right? So most of the time, I didn't realize it was developing that, but most of the time when we're working with lines, we're gonna like finish in the slope intercept form. In this form, this is the easiest way to graph a line. What this is, this tells you so much information about the line. It tells you that it crosses the y-axis here, right? And then the slope tells you how to get to a second point. So, you know, it's really easy to graph. You go to the y-axis to wherever this number is, the slope tells you how to get to the second point. Once you have the second point, you just connect it with the straight edge. Um, let's go for a few more minutes. We're about to get out of here. So I think that's what we just did, right? So again, this is called the slope intercept form of the equation of line with the slope M and a wire intercept of B. We made it about halfway. That's actually pretty good. Graph the line whose equation is this. Okay, so let me do the following. Let me get a text box. I think that's good. No. I'm back. Is my box in there? It's okay, I'll do another one. Why are you tripping? All right, you're, you want to give me a hard time of the day. Can I just get a space? <laughs> I just want a space. Let me try one other thing. I don't, I don't understand this keyboard. Like, it's, that's fine. I had to hold, like, shift. Anyway, okay. Paper, I want some graph paper. I think this one is good. All right. And this this will be the last one for today. Something like a slowing it down. Okay. Okay. Let's see, let's go here. All right, so let's get some graph paper. So like, let's put the origin about here. Uh, let me see. We need to go to about four or five in all directions. Let me see. Let's go like this. Actually, let me move it around a little bit. So I think it looks like we're in like quadrant one. All right. So let's let this be the positive Y. And then positive X is gonna go in this direction. And that should be good. Okay, let me see. Two. Okay, so let's go. Let me see. That's one, two, three, four, five. That should be good. One, two. Three, four, five. Okay. So this is the origin. We went one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this should be good. I think we're in quadrant one. Okay. So now say we wanted to graph this. Let me, this is fine. 
So if we wanted to graph this, we're gonna start with the y-intercept, right? We have a y-intercept of two. So that means to start on the y-axis and two, so that's where our first point goes. And then the slope tells us how to get to the second point. So the rise, the rise over the run, all right? So this says to go up two and then right by three, all right? Okay, so if we go up two, one, two, and right by three, let me see. One, two, three. I think we're here. Is that the point? One, two, two, three. That looks good, All right? Okay. So then what we want to do is connect it with the straight edge. So we use the, the wire intercept to graph the first point. We use the slope to graph the second point, and then we just connect it with the straight edge. That looks good. Here, let me see. One, two. When X is negative one, zero. When X is, what is that? Three. We're at four. That looks good. So let me see if X is negative one. That's kind of like weird. Let me see if I go one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. There we go. There we go. Good now. And then let me do this really quickly. That looks good. One, two, one, two, three. There you go. Okay, um, <clears throat> paper like this. Can I just shrink this down? Nope, undo. Didn't know I was going to distort it. Oh, it's still a little bit off. Anyway, I'm being a little bit OCD. I'm not going to stress so much about it, but you get the idea, right? Three, four is about there. Okay. All right. So, so again, to kind of recap, this, this tells us where on the y-axis to start. That's where this two came from. And then the slope tells us how to get to the second point. So if we go up two, one, two, and then right by three, one, two, three, that's that's how we got that second point. And then we just connected them with a the straight edge, okay? Are there any burning questions before we go our separate ways? Any questions? Um, so I will start to make these notes. I'll probably go ahead and make these available. So my goal, let me see. So this is the this is the end of week two for our sessions, but I do have like the rest the remainder of these notes uh, on my YouTube, and the homework is already assigned along with the corresponding quiz. Exam one is going to be during week four, so this is the end of week two, right? So then we we go through next week is going to be section one point three, and then exam one should be over sections one 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 two and one three. Uh, also, as a reminder, I think in order to access exam one. I want to say I made it available a little bit early, like that Sunday morning at 11, 11 before week four. But in order to access the exam, you have to have passed quizzes one, two, and three. All right. So quiz for week one, quiz for week two, and quiz for week three, you have to pass. Um, are there any other burning questions? I know, I know uh, there was one student that wanted to chat. So we'll, I'll do a one-on-one a, a -on -one with him in just a moment. But did anybody else have any questions? Okay. Again, so. All the stuff that you see me writing, I'm gonna make it available. That's one of my goals for the day is um, go ahead and load all the student notes so that you guys can kind of look at the notes in advance and you can have your own version. And then the stuff that you see me writing with the instructor notes, the instructor notes are gonna have more details than the student notes. And I plan to release those each day. So every time we meet, I plan on loading it. And basically the access it is gonna be in Blackboard. So uh, the, the folder that says box link is gonna be in there. That's why I usually load the notes, okay? So if there aren't any burning questions, um, we're gonna end the session here and from one beautiful mind to another, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm gonna stop the stream and uh, open up the session for the student. Let me see, let me check the chat. Number 12 on the homework, okay. Let me, um, 
Did you did you click on the ask my instructor for that question, Mr. Is it McKinney? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, click on the ask. Did you? It's it's in the homework, right? Okay, yeah, I clicked that. Yeah, click on the ask my instructor and I'll pull it up. Let's see. So we got this. Mm -hmm. Just let me know once you've, once you've done that. Yeah, I just clicked it. Okay, let's see. So if I check, you know, mm -hmm, I got it. Um, section 1.2, question 29. Hmm, why does that look like that? It says, write the slope intercept equation of the function whose graph satisfies the uh, given conditions. The graph of f passes through this point and is perpendicular to the line whose equation is this. This is actually a good question. Let me, can I, can I make this bigger somehow? Um, Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Okay. Share. Can I just copy? That'd be nice if I can just copy and paste. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so this is the question that, so this is when you use the X my instructor, you know, usually what I do happens is I get a screenshot of the very question you're working on. Um, I'm just doing this because this is a question that can help everybody. And then I know I know I still got a student that's waiting, so I'll go as quickly. I try to be as, you know, succinct as possible. So this question says, write the slope intercept equation of a function whose graph, whose graph satisfies the given conditions. The graph of f passes through, let me see, passes through this and is perpendicular to the line whose equation is this, right? So if you have x equals negative 10, that's going to be a vertical line. So that means if our line is perpendicular, right, like in a graphical sense, I try to be quick. Say this is the positive x, say this is the positive, say this is the positive y, right? So the graph of x equals negative 10 is over here, right? Say this is negative 10 here. x equals negative 10 is going to be something like this, right? So if our line, if they gave us a vertical line, that means, and our line is perpendicular, that means we're going to have a horizontal line, right? So that means the slope, you know, our line is going to be horizontal, which means our slope is zero, right? So we know that our slope is going to be zero, and it's also going to pass through the point <clears throat> negative eight comma three, right? Slope intercept, right? So that means they want us to finish in the form y equals mx plus b, right? So if our slope is zero and it passes through the point negative eight comma three, that means our wire intercept needs to be three, right? Um, suppose instead of instead of jumping there, because you you can jump straight to this form. Let's actually start with the point slope y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. All right, let's start there. Okay, and let's plug in these components like we did in class today. So we got x one and y one. Let's plug all this in. So then we're gonna have y minus, our y1 is three, the slope is zero, right? And that basically cancels everything out. It's gonna be a plus eight because of the double negative, right? But then zero times anything, all of this goes to zero. So if we solve for y, ultimately we get y equals three. So we have a horizontal line through y equals three, right? Which makes sense. So for instance, um, let's do this one in green. Negative eight, three is like about here. Here's three, 
And then, so our graph is gonna be this guy, All right? So when you have y equals three, that should be the result there. That was actually a good question. Hopefully, hopefully that made sense. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. And I know there was a student that um, had a question. All right. Thank you, Professor. Uh -huh, my pleasure. Thank you, Professor.